Hello, my name's William Hetherington, and I'm head of the If Cells uh, department at SOAS University of London. And this presentation is really um, to tell uh, you about our ICC International Foundation program. Um, I think it's probably best, first of all, to uh, differentiate this program from the foundation year program, which is also offered by SOAS, which is part of a, a four year um, degree, four or five year degree, but, but it's part of a, an undergraduate degree. The ICC um, International Foundation Programme is a standalone one year programme, which is um, provided by SOAS. Um, and uh, it's uh, predominantly for international students who need to do an extra year of study um, or have not got the um, relevant uh, grades to be able to get direct entry to SOAS. Um, in terms of the presentation itself, I'll be first of all saying a little bit about um, our department and then talking about the strengths of the ICC International Foundation Programme. I'll then spend some time going through the content of the programme, both in terms of the, the structure and then a little more detail in terms of the modules that are available for students to study over the year. Then I'll say a little bit about um, the, the workload, uh, how the timetable works, how, how many hours students study, uh, and also how they are assessed. And then I'll spend a little bit of time um, talking about progression because we have students progressing uh, to SOAS at undergraduate level, but we also have students progressing to other universities as well. So I can give you some information about that. And um, then I will leave you with my email address. So if you have any questions you want to ask me, then you can always contact me directly uh, for more detailed information. So in terms of our department, if cells, which stands for International Foundation Courses and English Language Studies, um, we have a number of objectives um, that we are trying to achieve through a range of different programmes that we offer, and the ICC uh, Foundation Programme is, is one of them. So, so first of all, we are, we are trying to prepare students for degree level study, whether that is um, uh, undergraduate level or postgraduate level because we run a pre-masters program as well. Uh, we're trying to provide students with um, uh, uh, a range of different academic subjects that they can study, um, really um, ranging from arts and humanities modules through social science and um, uh, business um, and finance as well um, in terms of the uh, um, undergraduate foundation program, the ICC foundation program. We're also, as well as obviously, as well as trying to develop students English, um, we're also focus, focusing um, very strongly on the academic study skills that students need to develop in order to adapt to a UK higher education culture. Um, for a lot of students, uh, the, uh, the, the, the transition from um, studying at predominantly at high school in their own country to uh, students studying at university in the UK, that transition is quite significant. Um, and, um, and so students do need time and they need uh, strong and clear guidance on how to adapt their approach to study in order to be able to um, really, uh, really develop the skills that are suitable um, for university study in the UK. Um, we have um, an approach which really tries to combine academic study with academic English study as well. So many of the academic English um, lessons that students attend on our programmes are actually combined and uh, integrated into the academic modules that they study. So normally um, students will, for each of their academic modules, they will have two different teachers. They will have a, a lecturer for the academic content and they will have a subject specific 
English support teacher who is helping them both in terms of their language, um, but also in terms of the uh, comprehension of the, of the content of um, the modules, um, in terms of the development of critical skills so that students can engage with the content of academic modules at some depth. And so, um, so this combination of two teachers is very effective, both in uh, students being able to develop English and study skills, which are um, really focused on particular subject areas, but it also gives them the chance to uh, review and reflect on the content and the ideas, the concepts, the theories that they're being presented with by the lecturer as well. And finally, we're trying to provide students with a with a university campus experience as well. Um, uh, campuses in the UK can be quite different to campuses in other um, universities in the world. SOAS has a very distinctive campus, a very dynamic, a very a very um, a, a passionate, and a very uh, multicultural uh, campus. And so it's a it's a really exciting place for students to really familiarize themselves with um, with with campus life, um, not just in terms of studies, but being able to um, develop strong um, uh, links to other areas of the university, including the student union and the clubs and societies that are that are that are available through through them, and um, and also the student support services. So um, advice and well-being, um, uh, careers, uh, things like that. So, um, so it's really important for us to give our students the opportunity to really engage with all aspects of the university through a strong campus experience. And obviously last year, it was very, very difficult uh, with the pandemic. This year, we have a, a larger number of students who are studying on campus over the first term. Some are on campus and some are online. And then hopefully by the second half of this year, all students will again be studying on campus. And our students study on campus as well. So we're not um, separated at all from the rest of the university. So in terms of um, the strengths of the ICC Foundation Programme, um, uh, for me, they're very, very clear strengths. So it's easy for me to be able to uh, present them to you. Um, and our Foundation Programme is quite distinctive in a number of different ways. First of all, it's very well established. And the ICC Foundation Programme has been running for over 30 years. So it's uh, an integral part of SOAS, um, but it's also very well known with, um, by other universities within the University of London, but also across the UK. And so um, it's, um, it's a, a, a useful way for students to be able to prepare themselves for study at a range of different universities. And we do have students applying to many different universities in the UK for their undergraduate study. Um, so uh, last year, so the students last year, they got offers from uh, around about 13, uh, yeah, 13 of the top 20 universities in the UK. So it's, uh, it's well recognised, it's recognised as a serious um, foundation programme, and therefore it is um, well respected by other universities. Rather than offering straight pathways, we offer a range of different modules that students can take. There are some constraints on the combinations that students can take, but really what we're trying to do is give students a choice so that they can choose um, subjects that they are motivated by, that they're interested in, and that they feel confident that they can perform well in as well. And as I mentioned before, these range from business finance through social sciences and arts and humanities subjects as well. Um, the the, the programme has been running for a long time and also many of the staff have been working within the if sales department for a long time and um, around about 80% of the staff have taught within our department for at least 
10 years and quite a number have been teaching for at least 20 years. So there is a wealth of teaching experience within um, the staff and they have a very clear understanding of the challenges that international students face when starting their studies in the UK and the kinds of demands that are put on students and the ways that they have to adapt in order to prepare themselves fully for undergraduate study at SOAS and at other universities around the country. As I've said before, you know, we're trying to give students a, uh, a university campus experience. I mean, obviously this is a central London campus. Uh, students are, have full SOAS status. So they have access to the, 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 the world renowned library, one of five national libraries within the UK, uh, the student union, student support. They will predominantly use accommodation, um, halls of residence uh, that, that are popular Populated by um, other SOAS students. So um, again, it's very, it's much easier for, for, for students on our foundation program to feel part of a, a university student cohort as well. And finally, yes, the, the location is very useful. It is in central London. Um, it is in walking distance from um, a whole range of different uh, museums, art galleries, theatres, cinemas and shopping areas, uh, parks, um, and so uh, there is a lot that students can discover about London while they're studying as well. Okay, so moving on now to a bit more about the structure of um, the ICC uh, foundation programme, and then I'll look in a bit more detail at the modules that students can take. So, so first of all, um, students will take four different modules and two of those modules are compulsory. So all students take those modules and then students choose two additional elective academic subject modules from a range of eight. And uh, so you can see, you can see from the list that the, the two compulsory modules are academic English and understanding the modern world, um, Understanding the Modern World is a compulsory academic module, so students attend lectures um, around uh, subjects connected to um, modern society, global modern society. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. There is also a range of um, elective academic modules. Uh, there's business studies, economics, there are other social science subjects, uh, politics, international law and development studies, and then there are some arts and humanities subjects like uh, media and communications, world history and world art and literature. So there's a really good range of subjects that students can choose to follow. Uh, during the year and students will choose these uh, they'll choose four modules and they will study them through the whole year so uh, looking at the modules in a bit more detail um, the academic english module to some extent it's really trying to focus on what we might call academic discourse so this is um, not specifically uh, or only to do with language it's more to do with how uh, students are expected to use English in an academic context. And so it's, it, it's really a connection between um, the, the English that is required, the study skills that are required for the different activities that students um, uh, participate in um, during their studies, whether that's lectures or seminar tutorials, uh, whether that's research reading or delivering academic presentations. So uh, you've got the language, you've got the academic study skills, and you've also got critical thinking. So it's also partly trying to get students to develop a what we call a critical approach to their studies. And, um, and so uh, what this really means in terms of what I mean by critical approach is that students are going beyond merely understanding uh, what they're reading uh, or, or understanding what they're talking about. And they, get, and they get to a point where they can evaluate 
Um, they can look at the strengths and the weaknesses of concepts, of theories that they're being, um, that they're covering in their classes, and they can start to develop their own ideas and their own perspectives. And this is really, really important because much of what students do in terms of uh, uh, writing, I mean, producing English, whether that's writing or whether that's discussions in seminars or whether that's um, presentations, uh, students are encouraged to develop their own perspectives and present those perspectives. So it's really trying to get a combination of language, improving students, uh, voca range of vocabulary, improving the, the accuracy of their language, but also connecting that to uh, essential core study skills and then also this development of a critical awareness as well. Understanding the modern world is really a, a very broad um, kind of foundational fundamental um, kind of academic module and it's really trying to get students to think about how we have got to where we are now. Um, it's, it takes a, a historical approach, so it goes back and it starts looking at developments in um, economics, in politics, in uh, social issues um, around the world so that students can start to see how society has developed, um, how globalization is affecting that development as well, and kind of where we are now. And I think it's a very important um, thing for students to understand that in order to understand current contemporary issues, uh, they need to have an understanding of the historical development of those issues as well. In terms of the elective academic modules, as you can see, there's a, there's a range of eight, um, uh, ranging from uh, something like business studies and economics, uh, where students are really developing a core uh, knowledge of key concepts and key theories. Um, these two take quite an international perspective. And um, a lot of what students are doing is they're, they're um, uh, studying theory and concepts, and then they're actively trying to apply those to real life situations um, in the business world, in economic systems. Um, so that they can then start to see how well the theories apply to these contexts and they can start to, to develop that critical sense. Um, in terms of politics, again, it's quite theoretical. It starts quite in quite a kind of theoretical mode. So again, students are looking at um, fundamental uh, political theories, um, you know, ranging around uh, um, democracy, um, liberal liberalism, uh, and then looking at some political systems like totalitarianism, fascism, and then going into other areas of political theory like feminism, uh, environmentalism as well. And then again, students uh, have the have the opportunity through um, presentation of more kind of. Uh, uh, subjects around international relations, and um, they're, they're encouraged then to apply these theories to uh, domestic and international political contexts. Development studies is a, a core subject within SOAS generally. SOAS obviously is focused on the study of Africa, Middle East and Asia, and the development studies um, uh, module is really giving students um, the, the, a kind of basic understanding of the development process, different aspects of the development process. So it's what we would call quite a, quite a, a multidisciplinary subject because it takes in um, economic issues and political and social issues and also cultural issues as well. Um, the, the, the development of uh, a society can have a significant impact on the cultures of those societies as well. So it's really quite broad ranging in its approach. Law and international society is really focusing on international law rather than any kind of national law. And that's really so that uh, students are not having to get too uh, bogged down in, um, you know, uh, for example, English common law. Um, they're looking more conceptually at international law and how international law affects 
um, the legislation within countries, but also it affects, the, it has an impact on both countries, but also individuals as well. So it also takes into account things like human rights issues, um, but also looking at, um, at, at a national level, um, use of force, um, economic uh, relations, economic trade as well. So again, it's quite a, a broad ranging, but it really does give students the chance to develop strong legal study skills. Um, media and communications, again, it's not, it's not, it's not a practical uh, module, it is more um, academic and more theoretical, and I suppose the main questions that students are dealing with is, is really looking at mass media, contemporary mass media and communication, and how contemporary mass media or media generally has shaped modern society. So, um, and this is particularly Particularly true, I think, over the last year or so with the pandemic and how um, through lockdowns, really everyone has been communicating, um, everyone has been um, uh, uh, obtaining information and data through media. And therefore, it's, a, it's, it's very interesting for students to be able to think more about the, the extent to which we are influenced by media and the development of media, the power of media companies, the power and influence, both economic, but also political and social and cultural power. So again, it's got some very big ideas that it's dealing with. World history is a, a history module, but it's also what we could call a historiography module as well. It's trying to get students to think about what it is to study history. Um, so some fundamental questions, not just about history itself, but the study of history. And it's really looking at the last 600 years um, and again, taking a global look at history and particularly at political, uh, the, the development of political and economic systems within that time. But as I've said before, it's really also trying to get students to move away from from a very traditional way of studying history and understand that history is very much to do with interpretation of the past and that history is subjective, um, that it, it doesn't really refer to things like historical facts. Um, there isn't really such a thing as a historical fact. Everything is interpreted by historians and therefore as history students, the way uh, students read history books has to be um, more subjective. And uh, 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 to some extent, uh, students are encouraged not, not necessarily to believe everything that they read in history books at face value. Finally, world art and literature. This is a very interesting module which gives students the, a, a combination of uh, literary and artistic movements. It introduces students to that. And so as well as looking separately, I mean, it, it is taught separately. So there are, there are, there are a, a 10 weeks of world literature and then 10 weeks of world art. And as, lo as, as well as, but as, as well as studying those, um, individually or separately, um, students are also looking at the interconnection between them and looking at particular um, uh, movements, particular areas of the world and how art and literature are, in connected, uh, are, are inter interconnected quite inextricably. So that gives you an idea of uh, the, the kinds of things that students study. And now I want to just talk a bit more about actually how the students go about studying um, the workload and the assessment. So in terms of academic English, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, we're starting with the academic modules. As I've, as I've mentioned already, um, there are, students will have two different um, teachers for each of their modules. They have a lecturer and they have a, a subject specific English support teacher working together and so the so the classes are a combination of these working together as well so students will have a lecture each week for each module and a tutorial seminar discussion really seminar is really talking about small group discussion with the lecturer so students will be presented with ideas in the lecture and then they have to discuss these ideas and extend beyond the ideas in the lecture in the seminar um, discussion. They also have three hours of um, uh, th three hours of 
lecture review and uh, subject specific reading and writing support. And so this gives the student the chance to review uh, the content of the lecture prior to the seminar discussion. So they have a chance really to, to get a, 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 a deeper understanding of the content of the lecture, but also it gives students the chance to start to reflect more critically on the content as well. And then there are subject specific reading and writing classes as well, which focus on for example, differences between how students are expected to write for different subjects. If you are uh, attending world art and literature, you're going to have to write about art and literature in a very different way to students who might be studying introductory business studies or economics. So it's very important for students to understand the different forms of uh, expression uh, whether that's written or verbal, that they are expected to use within those subject areas. And it also gives students a chance to develop the, the kind of reading skills that are necessary, again, at a subject specific level. Um, the way that students, the way that people write about art and literature or about economics is very, very different. And therefore it's important for students to understand those differences so that they can start to read as effectively as possible and research through reading as effectively as possible as well. The academic English um, uh, class is uh, just there's there's a two hour writing class and a one hour speaking class per week and this is focusing more generically on uh, academic writing and academic speaking uh, writing focuses very much on essay writing and what would be regarded as a generic academic essay uh, which is in fact very very different to what some students may have learned in IELTS, for example. IELTS is a very, very different style of writing to how you actually how you're expected to write at university. And the oracy class is focusing, first of all, on seminar discussion. So to help students develop um, an understanding of how they are expected to participate in discussions, which they which they do in their academic modules. And also um, uh, in, in the second half of the year, academic presentation. And um, so students will work in classes and in, in small groups, but they will be individually starting to present ideas so that they can build up the confidence and an awareness of how presentations should be structured. Understanding the modern world is, of course, the third academic module that students take. And again, students will have a lecture and a tutorial from their lecturer, and they will have two hours of lecture review based around um, the, the, the lectures that they're attending. Um, so that's four hours. Um, there is also um, quite regular one to one. Um, engagement with different members of staff, with uh, lecturers themselves, normally connected to the assignments that students are doing, the assessed coursework that students are doing. Uh, they also have engagement with their academic English teachers quite regularly, just looking at the development of, of their English. Um, every student is given a personal tutor, uh, sometimes called an academic advisor, and students can have one-to-one -one sessions uh, with their personal tutor about more um, individual issues connected to their study or maybe connected to their practical life or maybe how their practical life might be um, uh, influencing or having an impact on their studies. So it's really important that students have somebody who they can go to to talk individually about those issues. Um, they might then be passed on to the students service or it might be a, actually a relatively simple thing to solve but can only really be solved through a discussion with somebody who's more familiar with the context. There are also UCAS tutorials. So obviously students at um, on, I, on the ICC Foundation programme will be going on to undergraduate study and therefore they have to make their undergraduate applications through the UCAS system. Um, and, um, and so over the first term, students develop their UCAS applications um, through small group and one-to-one -one meetings with uh, specialist members of staff within our department. Um, in terms of the assessment, um, students will have for their, for their academic 
modules. They will have termly assignments, so basically two assignments, one for each term, and those will normally include a written assignment, but could include other formats like uh, group presentations or individual presentations. Um, so, or it could be a combination of a presentation with some kind of writing connected to it as well. Um, students will also develop a portfolio in their academic English module, which will contain a number of kind of ongoing homework and coursework, which they are doing. And then there are final written and oral exams. Uh, in terms of the academic modules, it's all written. Uh, in terms of academic English, there is a written exam and there is an oral exam where students will deliver a presentation, which is actually connected to their understanding the model. So that there is a connection between what students are studying on that particular academic module and then how they are presenting their ideas in their own individual presentations as well. So finally, just to look at um, progression and where students go on to study at undergraduate level. And I'm, I'm pleased to say, even with the the, the pandemic, the, the progression of our students was very strong this year, as in previous years. Um, so in 2020, this, so this is students who completed their, their uh, ICC program um, this summer and are now have now progressed to undergraduate study. So um, students got offers from 25 different UK universities. And um, uh, and then in terms of uh, progression, actual progression in the end, they progressed to 13 different universities. The majority of students have stayed within the University of London and that's quite common. So this year around about 80% of our students stayed within the University of London and that could be uh, at SOAS or it could be at one of the other institutions. So this year, um, as well as progressing to SOAS, we had students progressing to LSE, uh, Kings, Queen Mary, City and Goldsmiths. Uh, we would normally also have at least one student or two students progressing to UCL. Um, but I think this year students may be, and certainly we got offers, students got offers uh, to study at UCL, but maybe students decided to go elsewhere for whatever reason. I mean, we try very hard to get students to think carefully, not just in terms of the level of the institution, but the suitability of the approach that that university might take to particular subjects. And that sometimes can mean that students uh, don't necessarily go to what they might, what might be the predictable first choice, because maybe they don't think it is suitable for them individually. Around the, around the country, um, students also progress to Bath and Bristol, um, Lancaster, University of the Arts, London, Warwick, uh, Westminster in London again, and York. So again, generally speaking, they are progressing to high level universities either in London or around the UK. So just to get, just to kind of drill down a bit further into the kinds of programs that they have gone on to study. Well, at SOAS, it's a, it's a whole range. You can see, um, uh, the, but, but I think the most, probably the, the, the most um, popular subjects for our ICC students, ICC Foundation students, um, within the um, suite of undergraduate programs that SOAS offers, I think economics is uh, popular, um, development studies as well, although um, quite, quite often it's in combination with other um, subjects. History of art is normally strong, international relations and politics, um, law, management, um, uh, social anthropology, languages. Um, you can see um, there's a student there who's going on to study social anthropology in Japanese. Last year we had students going on to study um, international relations and Arabic relations and Chinese. So the other thing you might notice is there is there's, there's a number of students who are who are taking combined honours courses, so two different subject areas. And again that's a, that's quite a common um, thing within within SOAS. 
uh, not necessarily so common within other universities, but it does mean that uh, that students do have the opportunity to maybe um, if they if they have a particular interest or a particular regional interest, they can then look at it through two different subject focuses. In terms of um, uh, the rest of um, the students um, progressing outside of SOAS, um, you can see there. I hope that actually I hope this isn't too small for you to see. I've just noticed how small it is on the screen. Um, uh, but again, uh, social science subjects. Um, uh, management, accounting and finance, um, politics, uh, University of the Arts, again for things like fashion management, uh, Westminster is always strong for marketing, um, and, and uh, also Goldsmiths, for example, though not this year, but normally at Goldsmiths students may well be progressing to Goldsmiths to study uh, media and communications or media related subjects. Uh, King's is also very popular for that, as you can see, culture, media and creative studies. Um, so again, a very wide range of different um, subjects that students uh, go on to study um, their following year. So just to finish off, just to say that um, uh, for SOAS itself, um, students are uh, students get guaranteed admission letters for the for the programs that they apply for um, uh, that they apply for through UCAS before the mid January deadline. The um, UCAS the the initial the first UCAS deadline is in mid January. So if if students if students on the ICC Foundation program have applied for a SOAS subject a SOAS program in that by by that initial deadline, then they will get an automatic um, conditional offer. There are some eligibility requirements, but but um, only for a very, uh, that's normally, uh, for example, mathematical requirements for uh, particular types of programmes like BSc economics rather than BA economics, for example. Um, so for, for the vast majority of programmes, students can, can get a guaranteed condition offer by studying on ICC, and the offers will be um, conditional on them achieving a particular uh, mark uh, overall uh, average mark in the in, in the in the academic modules of the program, but also achieving a particular um, minimum mark in the academic English um, module as well. As I mentioned already, um, SOAS is um, the the UCAS application uh, process is supported by a team of uh, staff within our department. They're also teachers as well, um, but they've developed a, um, a strong interest in a, and a, a deep a deep knowledge of. Um, uh, the UCAS application process, and so they're able to give uh, clear guidance to our students. Well, that's really all I wanted to um, present to you today. I hope hopefully that's uh, that gives you something to uh, focus on. If you do have any any questions, um, then feel free to email me at the address there, wh2 at soas.ac.uk, and I'm more than happy to go into more detail um, if you if you want to uh, talk to somebody about about um, um, progressing or, or, or going to or applying to foundation programs, then again, you can always arrange a meeting um, um, through Teams or Zoom or something like that. Anyway, thank, very, thank you very much for listening and watching um, this presentation. And um, uh, ho hopefully we might see some of you next September. Okay, bye-bye.